bees are amazing. You just give them a piece of plastic and they go out and eat nectar, turn it into wax, and start to create on this piece of plastic this amazing construction. They work for thousands of hours. They don't actually sleep. They work their entire lives creating this perfect hexagonal pattern. And then later, they take this, this plate of hexagons and organize it with their eggs and pollen and honey into this perfect little community. And they grow and they just produce. Look at the perfection of this honeycomb. Each hexagon is overlapped just on center to the ones on the other side. This gives them, when they're making this in nature without the plastic, this gives them the maximum strength. Humans marvel at the perfection of the construction of bees. We marvel at how on this scale that we're used to, how things look so straight, so lined up, so perfect. And we think, ah, well, there's a queen bee and the queen must be telling them how to do everything. But that's not actually the case. The real case is, is that these thousands and thousands of bees, tens of thousands of bees, are all following very few simple rules in a parallel system. And one of the reasons it looks so good to us is we just look at the outcome. What we don't see is how much work went into it. Not just how much work, but how much rework, how much wasted effort, how much did it cost? It costs a huge amount of energy for bees to do what they do. This isn't just a bunch of construction workers putting some concrete in a place and following the form. These little guys put down a piece of wax and someone else moves it and someone else moves it again and someone else moves it again. And they don't just fill the right cell with honey. They fill the cell with honey and then as the, as the nest builds, they have to move the honey over so they can use that same place to, to lay an egg. And then when the egg hatches, somebody's got to come clean it up. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that doesn't get reused. There's an awful lot of waste in the parallel process of beekeeping. And while we as humans can, can uh, appreciate all the wonderful things that we can take from bees, one of the things we probably shouldn't learn how to do from bees is treat addiction. Because a parallel process of doing the same thing and doing it over and over and over again until it's right just isn't working. I'm Howard Wetzman, and while I love bees, I don't think they should be designing addiction treatment systems. Bees, and all of nature, use what's called a parallel process. In a parallel process, you've got many, many different actors, all interchangeable, doing the same work all at once, according to the same rules. It doesn't matter what sequence things are supposed to be done. They just do it. And if it isn't in the right place, they move it. Nature takes advantage of numbers. There could be literally tens of thousands of bees in a beehive. If they build the wrong thing and it shouldn't be there, the workers will just move it. I mean, what else would they be doing? But that's not how we design anything we do. You wouldn't build your house that way. A whole bunch of people coming and putting together whatever parts they wanted to put, and if something fell down, well, they'd just redo it. No. You would build the frame of the house and frame the walls before you tried to put the roof on, because otherwise the roof would collapse. You wouldn't build your house that way. You wouldn't build your car that way. You wouldn't design your health care that way. Could you imagine your surgeon? Let's try this. Let's try that. No, no, let's do this other thing. That didn't work. You would want the surgeon to think ahead of time. 
What sequence of steps must I follow? What things must be done in what order? You would want to plan. We all want to plan. We would never, ever design a healthcare system the way the bees do their hive. Except that's exactly how we treat addiction. So what do I mean by that? Well, think of what we do. If somebody has addiction, we send them to rehab. And what do they do in rehab? Well, they have a curriculum. We talk about it in a very educational way. They go to group. Uh, they get a curriculum. We even call them alumni when they graduate from our treatment. The counselor is giving the same information to everyone in the group at the same time. It doesn't matter if Bob needs to hear this right now to move on his way. It doesn't matter if Betty would actually be set back if she heard this information today in this sequence, in this context. Everyone's getting the same no matter what they need. And we wonder why there's a 17% success rate. And we just recycle everybody who, quote, wasn't ready, unquote, back through the whole thing all over again. It's just a random process, just like the bees build the comb. We do something, it doesn't work, it might even have hurt. We just do it again, and we do it again, and we do it again until we get it right. That's not health care. So what's the alternative? Well, that was really the best we could do back in the 1940s. No one really knew the neurobiology of addiction. Nobody knew how to categorize why a person had addiction. No one understood what the social consequences that lead to addiction do to the brain. No one knew why someone should get different treatment at a different time, but we do today. So we know enough about the neurobiology of addiction to get a patient ready specifically for moving on. We know enough about how cognitions change. We, we know the ideas that need to happen in order to go from active addiction to full voluntary recovery. And we know the barriers to those ideas. So we don't have to throw mud against the wall and see how much of it sticks anymore. We can know specifically what each patient needs to hear today and give them that so they can move to the next stage. Now, if we do that, treatment becomes a lot faster, a lot less expensive, a lot more efficient, a lot better. Readmission rates go down. Patient satisfaction goes up, costs go down, length of stay goes down. It's just a social good all the way around. And why don't we do it? Well, be because nobody believes we can. But having done it, I can tell you that um, we can. It isn't stupid business even. It's really good business. Because why would an insurance company send a patient anywhere else if they had the opportunity to send it to such a treatment center? So, <clears throat> when we're deciding, that was a bumblebee, wonder what he's doing around here. When we're deciding what to do about addiction, it would be better if we took our cue from people who made cars and built houses and built boats than these guys. If you need honey, talk to these guys, you need addiction treatment, see somebody who can make a plan. Have a good day.